Hi. Suppose you are relaxing in the control room, imagining that once the ship birds, you can go out, have a good lunch, do some shopping for your girlfriend, and then you get a call from bridge that the anchor is not coming up. Time to introspect. Do you know the equipment well enough? Do you know how to read the circuit diagram? Are you going to troubleshoot by looking at this circuit diagram? Can you identify the components on the spot? Do you know the functions of the components? I leave it to you to answer these questions to yourself. We are going to throw some light on some of these questions. The topic is very exhaustive and I am going to restrict it to competency level knowledge. I will try and introduce you to the basic level concept as required for a beginner. If you see this video completely, you will be able to somewhat understand how the windless hydraulic circuit works, the functions of the various components but not in detail. This may help you to a small extent but to troubleshoot you may have to learn more. What are the causes for windless not working? That is beyond the scope of this video. Welcome to Chief Engineer's Tea Time Talk and I am Ramesh, the pilot who will guide you to this channel. A big thanks to all the subscribers and request the newcomers to subscribe if you like this video. Let's move on. Keep watching. Have a good time. We start with the basic question, what is the job to be done? Of course, I need to lift up that anchor and I know that it is very heavy. I also know that I don't have a Hanumanji who could lift up a mountain or a Bhimji who can throw an elephant with his bare hands as a bosun. So I need a hydraulic device and that is an actuator. The function is actuation and the component is a hydraulic motor in this case. The motor of course should be such that I need to lift up and also lower the anchor. So I need to have a bi-directional hydraulic motor. You can go to the symbols video in my channel if you need more details. In other equipments, it could have been a hydraulic cylinder. The next question, how will the actuator work? Of course it needs a supply of oil and lines to supply the oil to the motor. The function is supply and the component is the pump. What type of a pump? Why is it fitted? It is too early to discuss this at this point of time and also beyond the scope of this video. The next question. If by chance the pressure in the circuit exceeds the safe limit, the hoses will burst or the pump will break. How can I prevent it? So we need a function called pressure limiting for safety and the component doing it is the relief valve. But if the relief valve lifts up, it will cause problems for me. It will make the pump unnecessarily draw a huge current. So the lifting of the relief valve needs to be avoided. Whenever bosun keeps the control lever in neutral position, it is as good as keeping the discharge valve shut and the pressure will rise causing the relief valve to lift. And I don't want it to happen. So I would try and make the pump stop delivering the oil when bosun keeps the lever in neutral position. I achieve this by fitting a pump which is a variable delivery pump. The swash plate goes to zero position when bosun keeps the lever in neutral position. We are not going to get into the details of that pump in this video. You can refer to some additional info if you need on the basics of the variable delivery pump in the hunting gear and steering gear video. Next, if I start the pump, the oil is entering the motor from left hand side and the anchor will lift up. Then how can the anchor be lowered? I need to make the oil enter from the right hand side. The function here is reversing and the component doing the job in this circuit is direction control valve. To know more about the direction control valves, the type of valves and other details, please see my earlier video on direction control valves. Now we are entering a very tricky zone. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इफ द बोसन कीप द कंट्रोल लीवर इन न्यूट्रल पोजिशन विल द एंकर स्टे लिफ्टेड अप विल इट फॉल टू द ग्राउंड यू कैन सी हियर दैट द ग्रेविटी वॉन्ट्स टू पुल द एंकर डाउन एंकर विल गो डाउन if the oil leaves the motor from the left hand side and returns to the tank if i need to stop this from happening i need to stop the oil from going back to the tank that means i need to create a hydraulic lock so the identified function is hydraulic lock and the component is counter balance valve in this circuit oil will flow through the check valves to lift up the anchor but the oil cannot return back to the tank unless it gets the pilot pressure from the right hand side so the counter balance valve creates a hydraulic lock which prevents the falling of the anchor in neutral position this is what everybody keeps talking about and remain happy so simple is it true not exactly the story is much more than this let me explain if my purpose for the counter balance valve was only to create a hydraulic lock and prevent the anchor from falling down then i would be better off putting a direction control valve which has something like this in the center position here you see i have created a hydraulic lock which can do the same job i also get a additional bonus you can see here that the pump is also unloaded because the pump is short cycling i have double benefit buy one and get one free <laughs> but windless circuits do not short circuit in neutral position contrary to all the myths and assumptions floating around then why don't i fit this and be happy well that's the reason as i said earlier the story is much more than what meets the eye and we cannot handle all the questions here one question will lead to another question and we will have to sit through a two day long video it is time to move on realizing very humbly that at every time we think we have understood actually we may have understood it only partly <laughs> correct or not next bosin is now lowering the anchor as the anchor comes down it has a velocity and also momentum now bosin stops the lowering he is abruptly stopping the downward movement of the anchor the inertia or momentum of the anchor which wants to continue going down because of gravity creates a pressure peak which will break the motor i need to avoid this and how i need a function called shock absorbing function and the component is again a relief valve but i would call it as a shock absorber valve next you know that i might have two pumps or even three pumps which can be started simultaneously if i start all these three pumps <laughs> this happens when second year and chief officer are in very friendly terms and condition of the engine room generators are very good <laughs> then all the oil will go through the motor and the motor will turn at very high speeds and the motor will get damaged on over speed of course the bosun can physically be very careful not to over speed but he definitely cannot know at what rpm the hydraulic motor is rotating he can only have a feeling and ships cannot run on feelings <laughs> it has to run on measurements we don't want to burden the bosun with this important and impossible task we now have a requirement of a function called flow and over speed control and the component doing the job is a flow control valve again details and advanced concepts relating to this is beyond the scope of this video next the rpm of the hydraulic motor is good enough to draw maximum power to lift the anchor which is very heavy very slowly now what if we are unburdening would you be happy to lift up ropes at a very slow speed obviously no then how do we increase the speed of the motor without increasing the flow of the pump we have components which will do this there are controlling components which will take care of this we call this function as speed torque control function here we have a group of components doing this job so we call speed and torque control group of many components this gets triggered in both directions of rotation of the motor 
Hence, we have the shuttle valve working in conjunction with some other components which could be direction control valves taking care of this function. We are not exposing the details here. Next, now that we have gone all over the place identifying various functions and components, we still have not answered the basic question. Who will operate the swash plate of the hydraulic pump and make it zero when boson keep the lever in neutral position? Well, we again have a controlling group of components at the pump end. At the very basic level, we would call this as a pressure compensating control. There are many, many more, but that is again beyond the scope of this video. The identified function here is pump control and the components involved in this group will be a combination of direction control valves and pressure control valves. Next, we move on to the very important obvious and miscellaneous functions. We cannot allow the oil to get very hot. It will cause operational inefficiencies in the equipments and will also result in oxidation of oil, resulting in the formation of sludge, increased wear and tear, etc. Hence, we have identified a function, very obvious function that is temperature control. And the component doing the job here is a cooler. So, this is very simple and needs no further explanation. Next, we need to keep the oil clean to reduce the wear and tear. We have a requirement of a function now called contamination control and we call the component doing this job as the filter. That more or less covers the functionalities of a windlass at a very basic level. I would say the points we discussed in this video are just the tip of the iceberg or a small percentage of the concepts involved in a windlass. And let's remind ourselves that on paper we are competent to troubleshoot and set right all technical problems including anchor not coming up. Most of us have our certificates of competencies which certify us so. But let's ask the honest question to ourselves. Are we truly competent? Frank answer based on myself would be no. I was not aware of most of these things in this video when I got my first class certificate of competency. So if the anchor had not come up, I would have found myself incompetent to resolve the issue technically or by troubleshooting. I would have been running around shifting motors and pumps from aft to forward, port to starboard, hoping for the best. And looking back, I would not call it as smart engineering. So let's have the humble awareness that the certificate of competency only certifies that we know something about a few things. And that too on a sample basis, based on a few questions asked during orals. And we have a lot to learn on our own. Windless is one of the more simple hydraulic circuits which we have discussed at a very basic level. The more complex ones which will haunt you will be the cranes, maybe electronic engines, steering gear, some of them. Ask yourself the question, are you prepared? So I don't want to discourage you. The idea is to encourage you to look into more depth and prepare. Happy sailing, happy troubleshooting. We will connect again in the next video. Thank you so much.